for video. Do I prefer the Canon 90D or the Canon R7? Then for this video, I'm gonna need the Canon 90D and the Canon R7. To be able to explain to you why I prefer one over the other, I'm gonna need also one lens. I'm gonna change my clothes and fix the lights and I'm gonna talk about these two cameras just after the intro. What's up guys, Dan Furlani here and welcome back to your new video. Last week has been pretty special to me because my wife and I had a daughter. So now my son Michael has a sister and that feels incredible. Just as incredible as the number of hours I'm sleeping at night. Am I sleeping at all? Hmm. That's why I'm drinking more coffee than usual. Anyways, what do I talk about today? There is one question that everyone's asking me and the question is, do you prefer the Canon 90D or the Canon R7? I thought I already answered in my previous videos with comparisons, but I think I focused when talking about the differences of these two cameras, mainly about slow motion, like 60 frames per second and 120 frames per second. With the Canon 90D we can shoot 120 frames per second in 1080, but without autofocus. With the Canon R7 we can shoot 120 frames per second in 1080 with autofocus and we can shoot 60 frames per second with the Canon 90D in 1080 and with the R7 60 frames per second 4K. So let's just put slow motion aside for a moment for this video and let me show you a few samples while I explain to you which camera I prefer when shooting in real-time speed like 24 frames per second. For the samples slash test I have chosen a lens that everyone has or that everyone should have in their camera bag and it's the Canon EF 50mm f1.8 the nifty 50 and why did I choose this lens for this comparison or at least to show you and tell you which camera I prefer because it's a lens that I can use with both cameras on the Canon 90D natively without any adapter and on the Canon R7 using the adapter but before we continue check the links in the description to see all my gear stuff and things my gear and check the link to Epidemic Sound if you want one month of awesome music and great sound effects one month for free okay so Canon 90D, Canon R7 with the EF 50mm f1.8, the Nifty 50 and since both cameras are crop sensor cameras we're gonna see it cropped so instead of seeing something like a 50mm on a full frame we will see it something like 80, 80-ish. Also for what concerns the Canon R7 we have C-Log, C-Log 3 actually so I shot in C-Log 3 and color graded it and for the 90D since we don't have a flat profile I used Technicolor CineStyle which I downloaded and installed in the Canon 90D so that at least we get a little bit more dynamic range and a little bit more flexibility for what concerns color grading in general not much but better than nothing. So this is the Canon 90D in 4K with the EF 50mm f1.8. And now with the same lens, the Canon R7 in 4K. Well, okay, there is more light, so the footage is brighter, the one of the Canon R7, but why? Because when we use C-Log, actually C-Log 3, we have to set the ISO at least to 800, and that's why we get much more light. So now I'm gonna show you another piece of footage where I adjusted the lights so that I could expose it, just like the footage shot on the Canon 90D. Okay, they're 
both good, nothing to complain about, 4K is great on both cameras, we don't get any additional crop when shooting in 4K and that's awesome, but even though the piece of footage shot on the Canon ITD looks good, yes, I guarantee you that it's really challenging to color grade it in a different way than the way I'd done it, cause yeah, we're using Technicolor Cine style, which is supposed to be a flat profile, but I think it's not comparable uh, with the C-Log3 or with any kind of C-Log, cause the colors of the 90D, when we push it too much, tends to fall apart. While on the Canon R7, I feel like, no, I don't just feel it, I know it. I have much more flexibility and I can make it look the way I want. Now there's something that I can do with the Canon R7 that I cannot do with the Canon 90D. And with the Canon R7, I can use the speed booster. And what does it do? It multiplies the focal length of the lens, of the image, of what we shoot, times 0.71. So that when we shoot with the 50 millimeters, that because of the crop sensor will look like an 80-ish millimeters. With the speed booster, will look like a 56, something like that. That's awesome. So everything gets wider, much closer to a full frame. Not completely, but almost. There is something more that the speed booster does. When we use it with the Nifty 50, for example, that has a maximum aperture of f1.8, with the speed booster, it opens up to f1.2. something that with the Canon NTD we can't do because the speed booster is an adapter and when we use it on the Canon R7 we adapt an EF lens on an RF mount camera and when we use the Nifty 50 on the Canon 90D we don't need any adapter so we can't use the speed booster which is an adapter. Alright, so the lack of a real flat profile makes it very difficult to color grade the footage the way I want when shooting with the Canon 90D. Even though its quality is great, don't get me wrong, I love the Canon 90D, just the R7 is more flexible. Plus, the fact that I can make it look like a full frame using the speed booster, well, that's an extra point for the Canon R7. Now. Let's talk stabilization. On the Canon 90D, we don't have IBIS, in-body stabilization. So when we film handheld with a lens that doesn't have stabilization, like the Nifty 50, this is what we get. We do have electronic stabilization though, and it works fine. Now, on the Canon R7, we do have IBIS and electronic stabilization. But for these samples, I just wanted to show you the huge difference that IBIS makes. So now we see without IBIS, with IBIS off. And now with IBIS on. Now let's see if the IBIS works also when we use the speed booster. All right.
right, so what do you think about it? Leave a comment down below, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget, check the links in the description to see all my gear stuff and things. My gear stabilization is something very important, especially for me that even though I have gimbals, most of the times I just shoot and held. It's more practical for me. So the fact that I can shoot and held all my B-rolls or sometimes even when I film someone talking real-time speed and I'm able to get some very stable footage, well, if you ask me, do you prefer the Canon 90D or the Canon R7? Again, slow motion aside, even when shooting 24 frames per second at real time speed, right now in 2023, if I had to choose one camera between the Canon 90D and the Canon R7, I'd pick the Canon R7 for many different reasons. The reasons that I've been telling you since the beginning of this video. All right. That's all I have to say. And I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Oh yeah.